It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Brian Hoyer. Hi, welcome to another Dice Tower iOS game review. My name is Brian Hoyer and this week we're going to be looking at Blockus. Now, it's a little lighter fare than we're used to reviewing, but it's an extremely popular board game that's been around for a while. And the iPad app has finally come out. And whether or not it's any good, well, let's take a look and I'll give you my opinions. Here's the main menu for Blockus. You've got Tournament, Quick Play, Multiplayer, and you can connect to their website. We'll do a Quick Play game. Now there's the Classic 4, Classic 2. You can do a Duo mode, so it has several different versions. Classic Team. You can go through the colors. You can change the difficulty on it. And you can play it with or without a timer. We'll do without a timer for now. Here's the playing field of Blockus. And you can either be the yellow players, you can see the yellow outline up here. There's red, green, or blue. It tells who turn it is by the boxes down here, the largest one, and your name could be entered there. I just put in the letter A. So the big blue box means it's blue player's turn, and that happens to be me. I have to play in my corner. That little flashing blue square there says that is the only place I can play right now. So I'll start in my corner, I'll place this square piece there. If I'm unhappy, I click the red X to undo it. If I'm okay with it, I push the check mark and it places my piece, and now the computer will take its turn. Now, I've used up my square piece, so I have these remaining pieces to play from. Uh, very Tetris-like, if you notice. And so I choose one, I drag it up, and again, I can only place it where that flashing blue box is. I can't place it anywhere else on the board. I've got to touch one of my own pieces at the corners only. I cannot have flat edges touching. They have to touch at corners. And right now I only have one corner available. So I'll place it there. Now I can flip it by dragging it around like this. That doesn't do a whole lot, but here I can flip it this way. But now notice I can't click the check mark because I'm no longer touching my last piece at the corner. If I play this piece, it's got to be played like that. Now I have a lot of corners to play off of because this piece has a lot more edges and corners available. Again, all of these blue flashing boxes are playable. So I can drag any of my pieces up to play off of it. A tip is to keep your small pieces for later in the game when you're running out of space because eventually you're all going to build towards the center as you notice and you're going to start to get into everybody else's playing field and you have to squeeze in smaller spaces into smaller spaces as you go. So you want to save the smaller pieces and play other pieces wherever you can. Now if you notice my score is 13 and all the computer players have 15. That's because it gives you points based on how many squares you've taken up. So you'll play until you can't play any longer. And again, you want to get rid of your big pieces first because if you're stuck with big pieces down here, that means you've got fewer points on the board. So I've got 13 squares I've filled in right now, and I'll play, for instance, if I were to play this piece worth three points. I'm happy with that. You'll see my score jump to 16. And you can touch other players' pieces, but only yours can touch at the corners. That's what really matters. So, what's the verdict on Blockus? Well, like I said before, it is lighter fare than we usually do, but it makes a really good filler game. It plays quickly, and it'd be a good game to break out when, say, the in-laws come over or grandma's staying with you for the holidays. Put it on the table. You can do four-player multiplayer right there on the spot, like any other traditional board game. Um, if you have somebody who doesn't want to play, say, Chronicle of the God Slayer or Forbidden Island, this would be a good game for that crowd. It is a really good game. It's kind of fun, especially if you're into that whole tetris -y uh, trying to squeeze your pieces into extra spaces and really thinking about each move before you play, planning ahead. This is a game for you. And one thing I didn't point out in the video review is it also has a great mode called colorblind mode. So if you have anyone who is colorblind, you actually flip that on and it looks the same essentially. You still have the red, blue, yellow, the pieces are the same, but then they put little shapes, like little triangles, to identify that the yellow is different from everybody else. And little circles on all of the boxes of the blue pieces so that they can look for the shapes rather than the color, which is kind of a neat little uh, aspect for people who might be colorblind. I'm not going to give my highest recommendation, but we all know the, how they love to have those little sales every time there's a holiday weekend, a long weekend, 
hey, it's a Christmas sale. Yay, it's Easter. We're going to have a sale on our iOS games. It's Flag Day. So if you keep your eye open, you can find it for 99 cents, maybe even free. Then it's worth picking up. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.